welcome back to my painting journey. This time is kind of a unique video. So I wanted to show, I've done, been doing a lot of dry brushing, but I wanted to show how that differs from layering. So dry brushing you've seen, you just take a little bit of paint and you brush it over the ridges and it deposits just a little bit on the tips of the ridges. Layering is where you take paint and you brush it up along the highlights to give you a more solid look. So I started out doing an Imperial Guard from Imperial Assault, here he is all finished, to show layering. And then as I was painting I thought, I wonder how the look differs from dry brushing. So partway through the video I brought in a, another Imperial Guard that I did dry brushing on so that you can see the difference between the two. Here we go, I hope that you have fun watching and let's take a look. I have an Imperial Guard from Star Wars Imperial Assault. He's already got some color on him from when I tried to paint him in the past and that should be fine. We're just gonna paint over it. So today I'm hoping to show you again how to base and how to apply a shade and then get into some layering, which we haven't done before too much. So here he is, I clipped him into my Citadel holder so that I won't drop him like I did the princess. And we're gonna just start with a base coat. So I'm gonna take some red. I'm gonna get quite a bit of red, like four drops. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of solid black just to tone it down so it's not as bright because I want his base coat to be darker so that we have room to highlight on top of it. We'll mix it up. All right, and that made a nice deep red color. All right, I've got my War Gamer small dry brush. I'm just gonna dip it in my water and add a little water to the paint. Perfect. I don't want it too wet because then it'll just run into the cracks of the miniature and I don't want that. I want it to, to stick basically all over. I'm just going to apply this now all over him. Make sure that I get everything and work it. It got into a little bit into his robes here, so I'm just going to work that out because I don't want it to fill up any of the cracks because it'll obscure the detail. I'm just going to work that out. Great, now we have to wait for him to dry. Okay, this coat is finished. You can tell because it's not shiny anymore and he already looks a lot better than he did before. Now that's the difference between what the coat that he had on him before was just an acrylic coat from like a craft paint that I got from Walmart. And you can tell the difference in quality because that coat looked dull and it didn't cover very well. And these miniature paints are what they're called high pigment or highly pigmented, which means that they've got a lot more color density in them. So even though they're thinner coats, the colors are more vibrant. They turn out much nicer. I'm applying a second coat now to even everything out to help him be a little more red. All right, now I'll wait for him to dry. Okay, here's our Imperial Guard with two coats of the Reaper Heraldic Red. Here it is. And he looks awesome. His coats are even. He doesn't have any splotching. He's red, but he's not overpowering red. Um, but he's red enough that when we tone it down with a wash, you'll still be able to tell that he's red underneath. So speaking of wash, that's what we're gonna do next. I've got my Citadel known oil here. I'm going to shake it up really good. Always important to shake up your paints. Um, in case anything's separated, you want them to mix back together so that they work the way they were intended to. I'm going to take my Wargamer Regiment brush and dip it into the top of the pot and just soak up a good amount of that known oil and then paint it across the ridges of the miniature. try going up and down the ridges because going across seems like it's not doing what I want it to do. Try going across the ridges some more. Just work it down into those crevices. Off my brush a little bit so that instead of adding more on, I can start to push it around with a drier brush. Okay, it's worked into the crevices of his cloak, so we're going to let him 
dry now. Her Imperial Guard is dry now. You can see that the shade worked its way down into the cracks and the whole miniature overall is darker, which is good. So now we're going to, well you can see that some of the, some parts on the cloak have gotten splotchy. And I might, well I know I need practice at my shading, but also I've been drying mine with a blow dryer, which might have helped contribute to the splotchiness. But that's fine because we're going to do some layering over the top, which should hide most of that splotchiness. Okay. This is my first attempt at layering. We're gonna do it together. I want to bring out the folds in this cloak to make them a nice rich red color. I don't wanna do dry brushing because that can look messy on a detail with a cloak like this. I feel like the cloak is supposed to look just really elegant and I don't want it to be splotchy. I'm going to clean up my regiment brush just with some water. I'm gonna take that same base color that we had earlier, add a little water to it to make sure that it's not drying up on me. I'm just gonna load my brush up with paint. And I'm gonna start at the bottom of this fold here. And just work my way up. Staying on that ridge all the way up until it stops. And I'm gonna go onto this ridge over here. Starting at the bottom works really well because generally your brush has more paint in it and the bottom of a cloak is usually more flared out so it can handle a little more paint. Just really gently working that paint up the folds and it won't be too noticeable on this first layer but as we get lighter it'll be more noticeable. This one in the front, I'm going to do a thin line up the middle here, like this. And it's basically going to split into a Y shape up these folds on the side. Just give it another coat because it's going to be pretty solid. So just like that. Okay, the baby woke up for a second and we had to take care of that. But while I was taking care of her, I thought, why not just see how dry brushing does work on one of these? So here's our layering one. And here's another one that I had that I've, I've done exactly the same up to this point. I had two coats of base paint and a shade. And so now we're going to dry brush on him because I'm curious to see what the difference would be in the quality between doing layering highlights on one and dry brushing highlights on the other one. So we're gonna try it out. Got my dry brush here, and I'm gonna just stick it in that base paint color. Wipe it out. Wipe it until almost nothing's coming off. And then we're gonna work it over the cloak. Going against the ridges again. Work it back and forth across all the ridges, all the way around the miniature. It's okay if it gets on his staff, because we're going to paint that black at the end anyway. Work it onto his face. Whoops! It's okay, my paints were dry. He just popped out of there. Okay, there we go. Here's our layered one that we did. The layers are very subtle still because we've only got one coat of paint on the layers. Here's our dry brushing one. So, so far they actually look really similar. By the end we'll be able to tell better, but it might not matter too much on these if you do a layering technique for highlights or if you do dry brushing. Alright, here's our guard that we're doing layering on. I put an L on the bottom. So we're going to move on to our next lighter shade. So I'm just going to add two drops of white to our base color to lighten it up so that we can do another layer of lighter highlights. 
That looks a little too light, I think. So let's try instead just some straight red. I'm going to take our Warhammer Regiment brush, add some water, just a little bit. And we're going to just start down here and brush it up. If you have shaky hands like I do, it helps to brace them against something. Just brushing it up on these raised parts. First face. I'm just gonna try to get this whole this whole hood covered. Got a little bit heavy down here on the sides of his face, so I just wipe my brush out a little. I'm gonna work on getting it out of those little cracks. And then his arm right here, I'm also gonna just paint straight red. While he dries, we will do our dry brushing. Let's pop him out of there. We'll do our dry brushing one. And again, I'm using my cheap Walmart brush because I don't care if the bristles get damaged from dry brushing. I'm gonna get a bunch of paint and then wipe most of it off. Again. Okay, then I'm going to go back with a regiment brush and put some red just onto his hood because I want that to be quite a bit more bold than the rest of his body. Use some more. This is heraldic red. Probably going to use a lot of it. I got some down in his eye space where I don't want it, so I'm going to take a dry brush and just kind of move it out of there so the cracks aren't filled in. And paint his arm. Okay, now we'll wait for him to dry and we'll go back to our layering one and we'll do another layer. Make sure he's down in there good. I'm going just the red again, see if we can get it a little bolder. I'm going to try going from the tip of the folds to the bottoms this time. Kind of making a Y shape here in the middle. So you can see that I've been working the red along the ridges and kind of getting close to these depressions but not all the way in them because I still want that darkness to come through because that's what's going to give his cloak some texture and some dimension and really bring it to life. Then I'm gonna add some more to his hood. And his arm. Okay, there we go. 
put another layer on. So what I can see from this layering one is that the co the colors stand out a lot more. It's a lot easier to to just see the definition between the ridges and the crevices. So I like that. Let's move on to our dry brushing one. So he's not quite as well defined yet, but it does go a lot faster with the dry brushing. Alright, here is our dry brushed one. So let's look them side by side to see what we have going on so far. So here's our dry brushed one, right here. And he's been going a lot faster. Dry brushing is faster for sure. Um, but his colors aren't as bold and the highlights and crevices aren't as... They don't contrast as much. Whereas the layering one takes longer but his colors are a lot more defined and those shadows and the, the highlights are a lot more yeah just defined. I'm having a hard time getting the dry brushing one to get any more red you know this is the second coat I think second or third coat of dry brushing and he's just staying kind of this dull red color whereas the layering one has been getting more and more red every time so we'll see if we can figure out what to do with that. Meanwhile, we'll go on to another layer, and I'm just going to do another layer of red with the regiment brush, because that seems to be working out well for us. Except for this time, I'm not going to go quite as far over into the cracks, or close to the cracks. I'm just going to stay mostly toward the tips of the ridges. And the Y up the middle and along the top. I'm not going to go down on the sides here this time. Make another Y there. And for his face, I'm just holding it flat against, and I'm putting my brush flat across and just dragging it. That way it mostly sticks to, you know, his chin and his jaw or his cheekbones so that we get some nice shading in the cheek area. We'll go back and do his glove. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna try dry brushing one more time on here, but if he doesn't get any more red, we might have to figure out something else. Because I don't think I can mix red a lighter shade of red without it looking pink. We're going to try, this brush is a little too wet, so we're going to try this other Walmart brush. I'm just going to soak up what I had on my hand. So this time I'm not drying out my brush quite as much. I'm trying to get more of that red paint to stick, so it's a little more filled than it has been. I'm still just dragging it across those ridges. I'm having a hard time with these ones right here. Maybe if I go the other way? Or down? I don't know. I don't want to take color. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Alright, so that time using a dry brush that had a little more paint in it did help to bring it to a more red color. He's still not as red as the one that we've been doing layering on, but he's getting there. Let's try red. So maybe just a little bit of 
this cloudy gray in it, just a tiny bit, because gray has white and black in it, so it might help us to make a lighter red without turning it pink. Can't tell if that's lighter. Can't tell. Let's add just a tiny bit of white. I'm going to put the white off to the side here, and I'm just going to pull a little bit of it in. Okay. I only mixed in just this little bit because it was starting to get a little too light for my taste, but I think that should be good. So, rinse our regiment brush. Add a little bit of water to that, just a little. Okay, and now I'm just going to use the regiment brush. It's a little bit flat on one side, so I'm just going to hold it. Um, so that the skinnier side is going to be doing the painting. And we're just going to take this up on the very tips of the ridges. So just some really fine lines. Alright, on the Y here, just the stem of the Y. And the two arms. And that's it. And then we're going to do another little Y. The two arms. There we go. I'm going to take some, just some more of the regular red and put it on the hood again. So I want that to be a little more of a bold red. I'm going to take a little more of this and put it on the shoulder right here. Okay. Here he is. He's looking pretty good. I hope it's focused. Found out that the princess video didn't really focus on the princess too well. So hopefully this works a little better. It's looking really good. I think he's about done. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to take some more of that red and add it to our light red color and do the dry brushing really lightly because the lighter that you dry brush the less it gets into the cracks take the regiment brush add another layer to the helmet and you'll find that as you paint miniatures a lot of it is just adding layer after layer after layer until you get the level of vibrancy that you want on a particular part of your miniature. I think I mentioned before that I did Rita Repulsa from Power Rangers, and I think her cloak took seven or eight coats of layering. Okay, there he is. He's got really good definition on this back part of the cloak here. But with the dry brushing, it got a little messy on the front next to his staff. It just didn't want to go in there for some reason. Okay, I think we have done enough layers, I think. Maybe let's try one more thing. Oh, that's weird. I'm gonna try red-orange, see what that gives us. I'm gonna add a little more orange. There we go. Hopefully this doesn't make him look like a pumpkin. And this is our layering one. So again, I'm going to take the regiment brush. Well, let's try a thinner one. We're going to take this Wargamer detail brush. And again, with the, with the more narrow side of the brush, I'm going to just highlight the tips of those areas, of those ridges. I didn't water down this color very much because I don't want it to really spread anywhere. By the time I've come back around, those have dried already, so I'm going to go over again. This red-orange color works really well. Give me that lighter looking red without turning it pink. It's 
some more heraldic red for the glove and the hood. And we'll just keep using that detail brush. Alright, there he is. He looks really good. That red orange helped a lot. I think that's all the layers that we need to do on him. So let's go to our dry brush one and we'll try dry brushing the red orange over. Let's see what we get. And then take the detail brush in the red to touch up the hood and the glove. Okay. Here's this guy. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to touch up the staff and his little eye slit and we'll go from there. I'm going to switch to the layered one and I'm going to grab solid black. All of these are Reaper paints by the way, except for the Citadel one, the Citadel shade. I'm going to rinse out our detail brush because that one works really well for details. I'm just going to work it up from the wrist of our miniature first. Just bring it up gently. Try not to get any on that cloak that we worked so hard on. There are many, many layers. Make sure you turn your miniature when you're painting so you can get all the sides. It looks good from every angle. Okay, now I'm going to go from the thumb and finger space and down. Okay, I'm just pulling the bristles of my brush flat and I'm going to dip it straight into the black just a little bit just so there's just the tiniest bit, I don't know if you can see, on the very end of the brush. And I'm going to stick it right into that eye slot. And just drag it across. It looks like I got a little bit in the wrong place, so I'll just take the red. Drag that across too. Right where I messed up. There we go. His eyes all done and his staff finished. So we'll set him to the side for now while we work on our dry brush. So he needs the same thing. We're going to take our detail brush and we're going to flatten out the bristles just a little, dip it straight in that black, and then run it from one side of his eye, his eye thing to the other. Just like that. Okay, now we're going to take the same detail brush and work it from his wrist up. You can do it however you want. I just like doing it from the wrist because there's that little bit of a bend there. If I start there, the bristles kind of naturally form in that bend. Yeah, if you have shaky hands like I do, brace them on something, it'll help. It's something that I learned from painting nails in hair school and cosmetology school. solid black. Right. I did get a couple splotches on his cloak so I'm just going to touch that up with the red. There he is. Okay, switch it back out. We're almost finished. We're just going to do a couple last details. I'm going to take just a white, the back over here where the other white was, and some blade steel. So for the white, I want to show you something cool that I saw. I'm going to take the Wargamer Psycho brush because it has this really tiny, these really tiny bristles. I'm just going to dip it in the white and I'm going to get most of it off on my hand. I'm just going to draw a line from his nose to his chin really thin line. 
and on this forehead here, and then a little bit just down here on the end of the cloak, and where his helmet thing comes to a V, like this. Really hope that you can see that, because it gives it a look of being metallic without actually using any kind of metallic paint, so it looks more solid than his cloak now. It has a little bit of a false glare coming off of it. And then I'm going to take, let's try the small dry brush, and I'm going to dip that in the silver, get most of it off, and I'm going to run that over this part of his staff up here to just highlight the ridges in his staff. I'm also going to do that to the base of his staff, make the bottom part that looks kind of like a uh, the end of it more solid, so I'm not worrying about dry brushing. I'm just trying to put a little bit of a coat on there. And there you go. He is finished. We've got the details on his hood and his staff. All I have to do is go and paint his base, which I right, can just do that real quick. I'll grab my cheap Walmart brush, dip it in this black, and then just... So I just like to push my brush against the base and then push it up against the miniature without really letting it leave the base. That way you can get really close to the miniature without getting too much on it. Then you can paint your edges. It's done. And he looks great. We did good on that. Okay, let's do our dry brush one. Grab our Psycho brush for the white. From nose to chin. There we go. His came on a little thicker, but if you want to go back and change that, once it's dry, you could just probably work over a layer of red. Okay, now for the staff, we'll take our flat, our small dry brush, again with the silver. And do just a tiny bit of dry brushing here at the top. And then we will paint the bottom of the staff, that nice blade steel color. Getting it from all angles. Okay, I'll, I will take the detail brush again, just grab some of this red and kind of cover up a little bit of that. I accidentally covered it all up, but that's okay. Just go back and do it again. Just wants it to be thick on this one. Maybe we'll let it. Okay, and the base. Just kind of mush it up there. And this is just a cheap acrylic, a craft acrylic black that I got from Walmart. You can use whatever black you want. If you want to use a cheap Walmart acrylic, you can. If you want to use a nice Citadel or Reaper, Army Painter, whatever you want to use. I just like the Walmart black because I don't think bases are very important. I don't want to use expensive paint on them. All right, and here is our dry brush one all finished. So let's hold them up side by side and see what we think. All right, here is the layered one. You can see that his colors are a lot more vibrant and his cloak seems to just be a little more smooth. The coats are smoother. Here's our dry brush one. And he was definitely faster. And his cloak is not as vibrant. But the details over here came out more for sure. So you're able to see a little more detail on him, but it's not as vibrant, but he was faster. So I suppose you could paint them either way. I think I prefer the layering just because he looks so much more red. We were able to lift him a lot lighter, whereas this one, we couldn't get him too much lighter beyond the first couple shades of dry brush that we put on him. In hindsight, if I were to do these miniatures again, I think that I would base, shade, and then I think that I would do one layer of dry brushing because it really brought out a lot of the details. After the first layer of dry brushing on this guy, I thought, oh man, why am I even gonna bother layering? This looks awesome, you know? There's so much detail here and it covered really well. But as we went on, the dry brushing stopped getting lighter. It wasn't covering enough and it started to, I don't know, it started to look more messy the more layers of dry brush that we added on top of each other. So I would do one layer of dry brushing to bring out those details so that I could see where to put, where exactly to put these layers on. And then from that point on, I would just do layering like we did on this one. So when we're done, as always, you will 
finish your minis with a top coat spray, a sealer to help protect them from the oils and dirt and dings that they might encounter. And I've mentioned before, I use Rust-Oleum, which, which bonds to plastic. I like to use a matte finish. So you'll spray it, um, do light coats. If you do too many coats of a matte finish, it will turn shiny. You can use a semi-gloss also if you want. Here's one that I painted ages ago with just craft acrylics. He's got a semi-gloss finish, which works well for the craft, you know, the apple barrel acrylics because they do come out a little more dull. They're not highly pigmented. So the semi-gloss works well for them because it brings out their colors more. If you, if you use a semi-gloss on one of these, generally it overdoes it and it starts to look, it just doesn't look very nice. So I would recommend a matte for these. I think that's all I have for you today. If you have any comments or tips or questions, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Here are our finished Imperial Guards. They look great. I sprayed them with the matte finish and they've only got a tiny bit of shine and it's perfect for what I wanted. So I hope that you learned a little bit about the difference between dry brushing and layering. I know I definitely did. Towards the, when I first did the dry brushing, I thought, wow, this is so much easier and it looks the same. I might as well just dry brush the whole thing. But I learned throughout the video that, you know, the layering really did give me the look that I wanted and dry brushing didn't. So there are times to use dry brushing and there are other times to use layering. And I hope that you had fun watching. Thanks for joining me on my journey.